Yes, let's go back home. The moon's cool, but... Oof. Alright, we're back in the tower. Alright. Gods, I can scarcely believe we went to the moon and back. But we'll have time to reflect on that later. Right now, we need to head back to Camp Broken Glass and deliver a thoroughly detailed report to Lucia. I'd like to very much to know how everyone is getting on here as well. They'd only just begun to retreat to treat the tempered prisoners when we left. I share your curiosity, but warning our allies of the final days is of greater importance. I speak not only of the contingent, of course. The heads of state or every nation must know what we have learned. We know not when or where or in what manner the final days will begin to manifest, and so we must see that everyone is prepared. Agreed, though we may wish to stress the importance of discretion, lest the public be sent into a panic. Not that anyone is in position of responsibility should need to be told as much, but it bears repeating. Anyway, first things first, you can't broken the glass. Okay. Let's go. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Lucia, you won't believe me, but I've been to the moon. It's good to see you all again. No worse for your lunar adventure, I hope. Oh, you knew? What? We've done what we can for now, and believe me, we intend to tell you all about it. But before we do, might you tell us what's become of Garlemald in our absence? We succeeded in subduing the tempered inside the Tower of Babel. We took many alive, but combined with those who were already in our custody, the number requiring care has grown exponentially. The inclement, con the inclement conditions here we have made it difficult, if not impossible, to treat them all here, and so we have petitioned the aid of the allied nations. Some are, understandably, hesitant to uh, pro-offer assistance, particularly those that were, l that were but recently subject to imperial occupation. That said, several others have agreed to grant them refuge for treatment. With the assistance of your fellow scions, we endeavor to see them safely transported and subsequently cured of their tempering. Will all the tempered be relocated? Not at all, no. We have sufficient shelter to attend to those whose treatments have begun, and enough healers have volunteered to remain until their patients have recovered. Julius is one such patient, though he is not yet fit to receive visitors. Truth be told, it was a miracle he and those in his company were not harmed in the chaos. If not for Alphano and Alizé, Timely's assistants, I dare say none of them would be with us today. In light of recent developments, have the Alliance leaders come to any decision regarding Garlemald? No? Given the tremendous ramifications of what has happened here, it will take time to determine what must be done. In the meantime, they intend to work with the Eastern Alliance to keep a close watch over the provinces. We have other news to share. Shortly after Anima was defeated, we received reports that each and every tower has vanished. For a mercy, the process 
was apparently not quite as violent as that you experienced in Thavnir. Those who were trapped within them have been rescued and are receiving treatment. To hasten this endeavor, the Beast Tribes have received instruction in the magics needed to cure tempering. Master Matoya is no doubt thrilled the Mother Porksy affords her so many visitors. <laughs> I don't think so. Yes, we are grateful for her ongoing efforts as well as those of our comrades near and far. As for the contingent, several of our members have been graded, granted leave to return to their homelands after the transfer of Tempered have been completed. Okay. Lucia and I will remain, along with the small force, to continue offering aid to those here in Garlemald. The Empire may be no more, but there are yet those who call these lands home. I believe that accounts for recent events here. So what of the moon and the Telferoi? Well, there's bunnies on the moon, you guys. I know, I didn't believe it either. The final days. God, I prayed your victory would mark the end of our troubles. There is still much we do not know, but the Alliance leaders must be told. Would you be willing to contact them in our stead? Yes, of course. I will send word forthwith. We'll also release your fellow Scions from their present duties, that they may return to Charlian. Your energies are better spent finding a means to advert the coming apocalypse. Speaking of your fellow Scions, you will be happy to hear that Mistress Kryle, though still on the mend, has been moved to the Baldessian Annex and given into Tataru's care. Thank you. I look forward to seeing them both upon our return. Let us be on our way then. All right. One last thing, if I may. After your confrontation with Zodiac, you said Xenos took his leave, and in all likelihood he has returned here to Garlemald. I have a mind to dispatch uh, scouts to try and ascertain his whereabouts, but first wish to ask if you believe there is merit in doing so. If they found him, they would not likely live to tell the tale. If you're expecting a trial of oh, if you're expecting a trial of destruction to follow, you won't find one. An admiral but futile endeavor. I don't think they're going to live if they do find him. Best not. Oh, I suppose you're right. To dispatch good soldiers in pursuit of such a beast would be to send them to their deaths. Pray, forget I entertained the notion. While on the subject of Xenos, the 10th Legion has made an official proclamation. They denounced the crown prince and condemned his role in the Empire's downfall. His very title has become a source of shame among his former subjects, and its continued use serves only to hinder relations with foreign nations. For this reason, he has been declared as Xenos Viator Galvis, outcast and enemy of Garlemald. Wow. Van Daniel is no more, and now his own people turn against him. It seems he's not but his bloodlust to keep him company. Yeah, that's what I'm, like, really scared of. Like, he has, he doesn't have his people anymore. Van Daniel, the only person that really talked to him, is no more. He's completely alone, and he's angry, and he's, like, something... Maybe I can go talk to him, you know? Like, I'm 
powerful, he's powerful, but maybe if we just, you know, chill out. I don't know. Like, I actually do feel sorry for him. And who knows how he was raised, you know? Who know? I, I don't know what his childhood was like. Maybe, you know, he's always been deprived of certain emotions, you know? He couldn't, you know, I don't know. I feel bad for him. Better that than an army to see it sated. At any rate, I will not keep you longer. I pray your safe passage back to Charlian. Maybe I need to go look for Xenos. Talk over some tea with him or something. Be like, look, it's not all bad. Maybe we can start over. You've killed a lot of people. I've killed a lot of people. But I've been deemed a hero. <laughs> I don't know. Alright, I guess we're going to Baldessian. Old Charlian. Oh, that's right. I can, I can use this place. Um, Ethernet. I want to go here. Oh, there's Kryle. Welcome back, Chesna. We were so terribly worried about you. Though it is plain, I have caused my own fair share of worry, and for that I apologize. Heidelin called to me that day when you entered the Tower of Babel. Her pleas were faint but desperate, and I knew at once she required a vessel to carry out her will. What came after feels like a dream barely remembered, my body flowing through the life stream toward Garlemal. When I regained consciousness, I was all aches and frostbite, exhausted of aether, so exhausted, in fact, I could only laugh, for it was in that moment I understood Raha's weariness from the Tower of Zot. Would that I could laugh at a time like this, though we prevented Zodiark from being unleashed upon the world, I am curious to know what else took place there on the moon. A lot of crazy shit happened. There's bunnies. <laughs> oh, perhaps we should wait for the others to join us before you give your account. Let us reconvene in the main hall once they've arrived. Okay. Oh, look, it's a human, uh, Sir Amrick. <laughs> That's pretty good looking, too. All right. Oh man, here we go. Wait. Yes, I want to wait. <laughs> Sorry to have kept you all waiting. Not at all. We understand you've been quite busy. Will Urian Jay be joining us? No, he's with the bunnies. Duty keeps him away, I'm afraid, though Chesna can explain why better than I. The final days? As befell Amarat. And we are to escape via the moon? What of the source and its reflections? I've no intention of standing by why the world falls to ruin. 
See, that's why I like you, Estinian. That's why I like you. So, how do we stop this? Unfortunately, we have no answers at present. If the celestial currents have grown stagnant, as was the case in the time of Amarat, the solution would be to alter the flow of ether throughout the entirety of the star. The ancients accomplished this by summoning Zodiac, sacrificing half the star's population in the doing, but it should go without saying that such a sacrifice must not and cannot be repeated. Which leaves us with the daunting task of identifying the underlying catalyst for the final days, a feat which even the Amaratans could not accomplish. Unfortunately, we found no clues in Mare Lamatorum. There is still much we do not know about the catastrophe itself, let alone what may have caused it. The final days were marked by the corruption of the Amaratine's creation magics, but we command no such power, which invites the question, what havoc is in store for us? If we knew that much, perhaps we could draw some parallel with the events of the past, and thereby form some semblance of a plan. Perhaps we should start with the Forum, then. Having worked with the Lapores, or Laparoi, in search in secret all this time, there is surely more they can tell us. Forgive the interruption. But I've urgent news. The forum is holding a public assembly in the plaza outside. Some sort of announcement. What is father up to now? I don't know. There's only one way to find out. Yep, let's see what old dad's doing. Is he gonna come clean? Tell everybody what's actually happening? I thank you all for gathering here on such short notice. Mm -hmm. This day we must speak of grave affairs and their implications for the future of Charlion, nay, of this very star. Said affairs concern all citizens, and so we have called for a public assembly. What are we all up to? You may have heard rumors of the Talofaroi and the havoc these madmen wreak abroad. Under normal circumstances, we would pay little heed to petty disturbances outside our borders. The final days, however, are another matter altogether. For we dare not ignore these prophetic words of Eld. The end bearers will come, ushering chaos and calamity. The final days descend and devour the very star. I've never heard this prophecy. Is it true? Will all that really happen? Calm yourselves. The time has come to speak of the Forum's most sacred duties. But first...
Give voice to the voiceless. Let bindings be unbound. By unanimous decree, I declare the enchantment broken. Oh, they can talk about it now. Master Leveilleur, if you would. Very well. Two hundred and seventy years ago, our forebears began an expedition in the Dravanian hinterlands, in search of a route to access the Ethereal Sea. This much is public knowledge. Their findings, however, would become the Forum's most closely guarded secret. What those researchers discovered in the hinterlands was not a passage unto the Ethereal Sea, but the very heart of our star, and Hydalin herself. Oh? She spoke to them of a calamity that would extinguish all life, and of a means by which we might be spared. Okay. The moon. Yeah. Tis in truth a gargantuan vessel built to serve a sanctuary for her children and deliver them from this doom. Yeah, the moon's a spaceship. <laughs> Much like Nuncref's hope in ages past, it will bear the people of a world in the throes of death to a new home. Needless to say, this will be no small undertaking. To facilitate the great work, the Forum has maintained close contact with the servants of Hydaelyn, who presently reside on the moon. Convinced that the foretold end was all but inevitable, we began amassing a wealth of knowledge. Not merely for the betterment of our nation, but in preparation for the journey to come. You reveal this to us now? By the gods, how long do we have? While we cannot say with certainty, we believe the hour to be nigh. We received a transmission from the moon suggesting as much not long ago. Which is why we must in earnest begin preparations for the great exodus. Man. For his impressive contributions and the leadership he demonstrated during our withdrawal from Dravania, we have elected Master Leveilleur to oversee this initiative. Fellow scribes and scholars, my countrymen, we face a threat of unprecedented scale. We must challenge the trials before us with composure and conviction if we are to find salvation. Alphano is just like his dad. The wisdom of Charlian has ever been a shining beacon in the darkness. And so it shall continue to be. That's what Alphano is going to look like whenever he gets his growth spurt up it. It is our solemn charge to see our heritage preserved for future generations. For those who will come after, we will brave a new frontier. Oh, they're mad. Oh, no, they're nodding. Okay. Administrative edicts will be relayed to all major institutions ere long. In the meantime, carry on with your duties. Oh, that carry I hereby on call this assembly to a close. Carry on with your duties? Dude, it's the end of the world. People are going to party. Carry on with your duties. Oh my gosh. Do you 
remember what Mother told us when we visited home. That it wasn't until after we were born that Father seemed to lose himself in his work. Because he cared for the future. He cared for you two. That's why he worked so hard. If that great work of his was the evacuation of this star, then... Yes. It wasn't for his benefit. No, it was for you and your sister. Would you mind waiting here a moment? I wish to speak with Father before we leave. Good. You need to talk to him. Take your time. There's probably a lot to say. Thank you. I shan't be long. If it's all the same to you, I have a few choice words to share with Father as well. Well, he couldn't talk about it. I mean, he had that... magic. So he couldn't talk about it. So, come to call us cowards and bid us join your fruitless battle against the inevitable. Nay. We do not object to the Forum's proposal. On the contrary, those who wish to flee have every right to do so. Orianger is cooperating with your associates on the moon to ensure that all is ready should evacuation be our only recourse. Then whatever your business, I suggest you be brief. Oh, just hug him. <laughs> Though we cannot boast the boundless wisdom of Charlian, we have first-hand knowledge of foreign cultures, and have conversed with no small number of peoples. These experiences have taught us fundamental truths that cannot be recorded in any tome, nor charted on any map. The beating heart of this planet is its people, many of whom would give anything, even their lives, to protect the lands they love. Many may choose to join you in the end. But what of those unwilling or unable, for whom escape will never be an option? What would you have them do? Uh, party hard until until the end comes. <laughs> I don't know. To ignore the plight of those one might conceivably save is not wisdom, Father. It is indolence. Mm. This is why we choose to fight. We'll not ask for your understanding, Father. Only that you don't turn a blind eye to the good we have done. That we can still do. We're not children in need of protection. Hold fast to your principles and let the world burn if it please. But we believe there is still another way. And if there is, we will find it. You see if we don't. Oh. Do as you will. Just stay out of our way. Oh, Dad, come on. Fortune, oh. Ugh. Man, you were making it really hard for me to like you. Were he not so consumed with self-righteousness, he might tell you how proud he is of you both. That's what I think, yeah. There was a bit of a smile there, but he wasn't gonna he wasn't gonna say what he was really thinking in front of company. Bold words call for bold action. And there'll be no turning to your father should plans go awry. Yep, that's why you got Big Brother here. He can kick ass and take names. It's fine. We'll be fine. <laughs> As if I ever would. So long as there are those who wish to stay and fight for this star, we have to do what we can to help them. Yep. And if we're to do that, we'll need to be well rested. Wouldn't you agree? And having triumphed over what we once thought to be the source of all evil, I can think of no one in greater need of at least a dozen winks. <laughs> 
Yeah, Zodiac was kind of flat. Shall we then? To the annex. To prepare for tomorrow. Like he was supposed to be the end all be all. Destroy the evil. And that's not what happened. That's it was completely different. <laughs>